<laughs> Here we are again, the animal stories. <laughs> News team Ackerman. Here's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Lair. And there's him, in person. Hi. Little snut nosed Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Hi. Hi, Uncle Lair. Hi, everybody. According to police in Willenhall, England, a horse drawn cart of scrap drew up behind a motorcyclist at a railroad crossing gate, which was down to allow a train to pass. The horse proceeded to drool on the <laughs> cyclist. <laughs> Here's some bike. All right, hello. Uh, I'm going to show you how to. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you a quick tour of my first impressions of the Dwarf 3. Um, complete uh, complete uh, transparency here. I am a C-Star user, so there's my C-Star in trans in an equatorial mode. Love it. Uh, battery lasts a long time. I can leave it plugged in all night. Works fine. Works great in equatorial mode for me. I live in a pretty rural area, so I get 30-second exposures usually without too many drops, so pretty satisfied. I've also got my 10-inch uh, Dobsonian Skywatcher uh, 250p. So I wanted to compare the Sea Star to the Dwarf. And I, you know, when I, when I thought about doing this, the, there's not a lot out on YouTube. There's some videos by a few different creators out there, and they're pretty good videos. I think things are moving so fast, though, it's hard to keep up with what's going on. So this is early May 2025, and I just got the Dwarf Lab 3, the Dwarf 3, last week. And I'm going to do a quick uh, review of the app and a little bit about the Dwarf itself here. So when you look at it, it's just the size is so much smaller than the Sea Star. I don't know if you can tell there. But it's, I mean, it's just really small as compared to the Sea Star. You could easily put this in the package, which I don't have with me right now. But you could put it in a little carrying case, and you could take this with you anywhere with 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 real ease. Another couple differences here that I noticed: the you know it's so small and compact, the build quality is really really good compared to I would say. And I'm not knocking the Sea Star, but it feels just a little cheaper than the than the Dwarf does. Uh, here's the on button, and you wait for the little green glow. I think that's green. I'm colorblind to connect to it, and then when you press it again to turn it off, it turns red, and it'll go off. Down below is the battery indicator. Those four dots there, it shows you uh, how much battery you have left. A couple other things I noticed real quick that are differences between this and the Sea Star. You can move this on its base without any issues at all. You can't really do that with the Sea Star. So there you go, I can move it. The other thing that's interesting about it is, you know, on the Sea Star, there's no way I could pull up the actual lens like I can here. In fact, you need to do that, I think, or you don't have to, but you have that ability if you're taking darks, which is another difference between that and the Sea Star, or you needing to, like I'm gonna maybe show you here in another video, how to image the sun or the moon very quickly. It's a far different process than with the Sea Star. So I can actually move this up like that with no problems at all. I wouldn't dare do that here. Maybe I can, I've never done it, but I wouldn't. So when you open it, you can see here, you've got the two lenses here, right? wide angle in the telephoto right there and there. And then it comes with automatically, which is another difference from the Sea Star. in the packaging, you get this. So what this is, it's a little plastic pocket. I guess they call it a plastic pocket. Let me show you what it is here exactly. Get my camera straightened out. So it comes with this, among other things. It's got a USB cord in the case it comes in and things like that. This is an automatic, this is a solar filter, magnetic solar filter. It's a really cool idea. Which is, if you remember, if you know what the Sea Star, it comes with a little orange, like a, a, a mylar, not, not mylar, it's like a, a typical solar filter you might hear, or you might, you might see when you're wanting to image the sun. So all you do with this, it's really kind of cool, it's, a, it's really well thought out. That's the one thing I'm really, one of the things I'm really impressed with the Dwarf, it's really well thought out. See, so pop it on, it's magnetic. Now there are online some other things you can get that are other, uh, other options like this, which I don't think you need them. It's another difference between the Sea Star is you can get like the, uh, oh, what do you call it? the diffraction spikes? I forget the name, a Batonoff, Batonoff mask. And it actually has a little dew cap that pops out just like you do, you can get for the Sea Star aftermarket. 
But I don't think, and I haven't had this out a lot yet because the sun hasn't been very cooperative. I don't think you need a dew cap on this because the temperature of this, and I'll show you in the app, it keeps so warm. It, it, I don't think dew's an issue. And I've read on, online in the forums and people that uh, use, the, use the dwarf, I don't think you need a dew cap with this. So it'll stay warm enough, just like it's got you know the dew option on the Sea Star over here. It's got the same thing built in where you don't need the dew cap. The bat, batten off mask, I don't know, maybe in the future. But anyway, so you can move this freely. It, it, the other thing I like about it, one of the things I, that are different that I think, and I haven't used this a lot, so when I say like, it's based on just a little bit of using it here. I've imaged the sun with it a little bit, and I did just one night of astro imaging with it, but it all worked fine. The other thing that's really interesting to me, I can spin on the base, the charge cord, is the base is stationary, right? So if I ain't got to plug in an external battery to keep this charge to go have a longer session, this part doesn't rotate, so the cord's not going to twist around. Like on the C-Star, let me go over here and show you. So on the C-Star, if I plug an external battery into that, Unless I have it mounted right up here, like I usually take my battery and put it down here in a tray and the cord runs up here. But if, if you have a session and you're going wide areas, many degrees across the sky and it may twist or turn, the cord could get wrapped around it. Well, that's not an issue here, here with the Dwarf 3. So that's another difference. Now, I'm going to say I'm, I'm, I'm like a lot of people and I don't read manuals for things like this. I just get out and start using them, just like my Dobsonian and the Sea Star and then this Dwarf. I'm the type of person where I, uh, I'll i watch YouTube videos and try to teach myself how to use it. I'm gonna say with this Dwarf 3, you need to read the guide. You need to read the whole guide and try to understand it. This is not the Sea Star. It's different. It does a lot of the same things the Sea Star does, but it is different. It's uh, I would call it more of a... Uh, it's a lot closer to, it doesn't look like it, but it's a lot closer to a digital camera in a lot of ways because you get a lot more ability to do things that you don't with the C-Star. Now, I'm not saying that's better or worse. I'm just saying it's different and it's a lot more, it's a lot more involved. If, you're, uh, if you've got a C-Star, you know how easy it is to get up and going and be imaging very quickly. Uh, the dwarf can be just as quickly, but you get a lot more customization and options, just like you would with a digital camera. That there's somewhat of a learning curve if you're not very familiar with that, and I'm definitely going to have somewhat of that learning curve as I do this. I'm going to stop this video at this point. That's just the introduction to my initial thoughts on the dwarf itself. I think the build quality is excellent. Um, I, you know, I love the C Star too, but I'm trying to compare the two here. So that's my first impression of the dwarf when I got it. So I'll start another video here on the app that comes with it. Let me get this back in here. I'm really bad about not putting stuff away. Um, I'll start, I'll go through the app and what that looks like, which I think is really interesting too. Thanks.